Good morning, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. You know, today I'm going to take a look at Dennis's machine. And this is heading to Australia. Now, I've shipped a lot of machines lately. Some really cool builds that I wanted to show off that I didn't have time. And speaking of which, one of them is right here. It's already boxed up, labeled, ready for UPS pickup. But that is Steve's Fractal. Um, Core 500 build. It's turned out really freaking awesome. But think about this one. Dennis, for some reason, wanted to go really small considering he uh, this is going in, I do believe, a four player arcade. So he did want to go with one of the ETA Prom's similar builds. However, that had a 36, AMD 3600 with a GTX 1650. And uh, he made the assumption that it was a 1660. There's a reason why the 1650 and the 1660 will work in certain machines and not others. But we ended up going with the Fractal Node 202, which is a very slim line case. And here's the thing. Every single year, I build a machine in this exact same case and completely forget about it's, it's design specs. Every single year, I go through the exact same thing. And I do believe Scott Nelson, you're the last person. I think it was in December. I built one of these with, I do believe you had a, I can't remember, Scott, if you're watching, you can comment. I do believe you had an i7 or an i9 with a RTX 2070 which was in the top of the line at the time. Probably even still there is. But I can't remember if I put 12 terabytes in that thing. I, anyway. So, I, again, completely forgot about uh, Dennis's design. You know, just design specs. I'm just slammed and, you know, make sure that I get the configurations correct uh, based on each customer's, you know, a need. But sometimes things slip by and it costs a little bit more time. Like, for example, I've got... One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven. Those are just today's going out. So let me take a look. Let's take a look at what had to be done to uh, Dennis's machine. Now, if you listen to the fan, you can hear it blaring. I have no fan profile set. Smart fan is not turned on. I wanted to see how it would perform at just a max fan level. We went with a Fractal. I know we went with a uh, Noctura, I do believe. Low profile fan. He's got an MSI 460i Mini ITX motherboard. 16 gigs of, uh, I think it's 3200 XMP RAM with AMD Ryzen 5 3600. Again, it's the, I do believe that's the Noctura. Oh, profile. Anyway, it does a great job. This case does come with a 450 watt power supply. Inside, we've got an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. And that's right, that's not part of this case. So we've got a Seagate Barracuda Pro 10 terabyte. And I installed a Noctura brushless fan. Now, to get the fan to correctly blow and maintain its, you know, a decent push-pull configuration. Well, as good as we can get, we sort of have to make sure that our fan is, you know, it's got space under there. And we're really, what we're doing is we're hovering. And we want this. We want this design here. Uh, basically, if you fabricate something to sit there and where it's hard you know, it's hard set. You know, there's no real adjustment when it needs to be made. But if you take a look down here, all, we have a positive airflow all the way through under the GPU. I was even able to keep that um, cable routing hole open, which usually I cannot do on these builds here. But this, unlike the Silverstone case, this comes with its own power supply with the power cables perfectly um, linked 
they did their measurements. They didn't just put out an SFS, SFX power supply with huge cables. They just gave you the exact length that you need. So it took me about an hour to come up with this bracket that actually worked. And this is fastened to the case. So the hard drive's not going anywhere. It's turned upside down. And the fittings actually, I reversed the SATA cable. And he's, it's been doing great. I have, uh, like, again, I have no profile set. Now, see, if you're going to go with the case like this, I will give you a quick little hack hint. If you take a look on the side of this case, you're going to see vents right there. See those vents? So that's basically for one thing. So whatever fan you're using can push that hot air out through an open source. So if you've got a vent, it's going to try to push that out. However, so you're creating a, a um, push situation then. Just straight positive push no um there's no intake besides this guy and there's real, no real airflow to hit this mark you know to hit that area over here so whatever stagnant air pockets exist they're going to exist but you do have this small this small section of the vents right here and I don't know if this was by design or not, but this is perfect for 80 millimeter fans. And you can position three 80 millimeter, 80 millimeter fans directly right next to each other. Then you can create a proper push-pull configuration. But with the current state as it is, I left this stress test last night. The highest yielding temperature was 86 degrees Celsius. And the hard drive was at 77. So not bad. Not bad at all. And, uh, man, i got to make a note. I should write that on, the, on my board over here somewhere. Because this is probably the 10th time I've had to do this. And I completely forgot. Well, anyway, guys, stick around. Stay tuned. I've got some really cool videos coming up this afternoon after I finish up all the uh, shipping and the builds. I do have some new additions to the 50 inch Nexus, a new hyper marquee monitor. I'm halfway through creating my own bezels. I mean, uh, my own marquees. I am using the launch box marquee generator and it's turning out very well. The only thing that's not is the naming. So, um, we're going to do that later. In the meantime, have a great day, guys. See you soon.